Let's bring in Nancy Pryle. She's co-CEO and senior portfolio manager at Essex Investment Management. Nancy, before I get to that big reveal, this has been a challenging market. And to Jay's point, the economy and the Fed policy does remain a huge question mark. What's your top level advice for investors? Absolutely. And this has been a very challenging market. The market is in the process of discounting a myriad of worries, including, of course, inflation, of course, interest rates, and the risk of something worse than a soft landing. Um, markets generally discount recessions about a year ahead. So that would coincide with what we've been talking about, slower growth in the back end of the year and a somewhat challenging 2023. As we think about this environment, though, we need to remember that even in a difficult market, there are opportunities of underexploited areas and inexpensive stocks with good growth potential. We're encouraged that the early earnings data is still showing very solid positive earnings surprises. I believe the number on the S&P is about 78 percent. That's down modestly from 80 percent, but well above long-term trend. Hmm. So companies have been able to pass on the cost increases and the price pressures, showing improving margins and good, solid um, revenue growth. And we think that that's where investors need to look for opportunities. But again, we would look on the road less traveled as you were, areas that are not overowned, not overexploited. Right. And one of those areas, correct me if I'm wrong, is industrials for you. Is that right? And how does that sort of overlap with the areas of the market you typically want to be exposed to at this point in a tightening cycle? Right. So we think it's it's a little bit counter to what you might think of in a, in a tight normal tightening cycle because of the economic dependence. What's different this time or where we think the opportunity is, particularly looking out past this period of digesting all of these interest rate and inflationary pressures, is the reshoring of manufacturing, the rebuilding of American infrastructure. When you look at industrials as part of any of the benchmarks, whether it's the S&P 500, the growth benchmarks, or the broad Russell benchmarks, they are relatively low as a percentage of the benchmarks. For example, in the S&P, industrials are less than 7% um, in the Russell 1000 growth or, and 3000 growth. That's a similar kind of number. We think that is um, way under um, exposed given the growth prospects we see and would expect that number to come up over time. Where will that come out of? Probably the traditional growth areas of healthcare and technology where we've seen a lot of investor enthusiasm over the last 15 years. Yeah. I'd remind investors that we saw something similar after the great financial crisis with tech where it was about, it was low double digits as a percent of the benchmark. It's now, um, depending on the benchmark, in the 20 to 30 percent range. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.